On this episode of American Reef, Mike's adding some new corals to that big tank of his. I'm Russ Kickle. Welcome to American Reef. So a few weeks back, we announced we're going to start a new multi-year series uh, with Mike and Sanjay, where basically they're going to get corals from the same colonies, right? Put them in their tanks and grow them out and see, for example, like in Mike's system versus Sanjay's, which ones grow faster, which ones are more colorful, that sort of thing. And it's just a, a nice little comparison uh, against kind of like the two senior, well-seasoned veterans in this hobby. Um, and again, it, it'll be cool just to see kind of the results of that. And today is the first of those videos, right, where Mike got about 20 from uh, Top Shelf. And what he does is he kind of not only goes over the corals, why he likes them, etc., but he also talks about how he'll take and mount them, right, and as well as how he cleans them, right, how he, you know, dips them, that sort of thing. So again, for the new hobbyist, great information because you've got a guy here who has probably mounted a thousand frags in his lifetime. Um, so after a while, you should figure that sort of stuff out. Um, and uh, either way, great video to watch. Now, before we spin that video up, there's two other uh, kind of announcements. Number one, Bulk Reef Supply. Um, they have a must-watch video out on YouTube. Basically, that BRS-160, they, they took that and they have a, ooh, the mistakes we made kind of thing. Um, again, very informative, uh, and again, for us as hobbyists, you, you learn from other people's mistakes, and it's great that they share it. So again, of the thousands of videos that they have out there, this one is definitely, in my opinion, one of the top five to kind of to kind of watch. Um, second one, one of the viewers pointed out to me, you didn't realize that like with Premium Aquatics and their videos, a lot of times they are doing those videos with giveaways. So, um, you know, whether it's uh, lights to additives to whatever, the idea there is watch the video, um, and then from there you either you subscribe, you comment, that kind of thing, and it basically enters you in for that giveaway. And again, Premium's been doing like a really bang up job, meaning constant kind of giveaways going on. And for whatever reason, apparently a lot of viewers didn't realize that that existed. Um, so the videos that you'll want to watch and kind of look at will be on Facebook and YouTube. And again, it's nothing more than subscribing or liking and commenting and then you're put in for the raffle. And then, again, you could possibly get something that, uh, again, you want to add to your collection and uh, that they've kind of demoed for you. So now with that being said, again, lastly, if you want American Reef's HPD, right, again, the high performance diet, just go on over to AmericanReef.com and you can click the store button and that'll take you over there. Or you can go directly to AmericanReefHPD.com. And again, place your order that way. So with that being said, let's see how Mike, right, is going to make out adding these 20 new frags to that system. Christmas That's what I'm saying. It's Christmas in <laughs> Christmas in July at Mike Paletta's house. <laughs> That's exactly it. Well, what do you got working? What do you got going? It's on? Christmas in July. I got a box of frags. <laughs> oh, it is August. It is August, <laughs> but August. it's close enough. <laughs> right. But it's Christmas in the summer. Yeah, there we go. No, it, it's it's nice that I'm still of the mindset when I open a box of corals. It's still exciting. It's still like Christmas. <laughs> yeah. There's not much else that as you get to my age, it's like Christmas. <laughs> So I got a brand new box of frags from Top Shelf. Uh, fortunately, they had a sale over the past couple weeks. I bought lots of goodies on sale because I still have one section of the new 500 to fill in, which is filling in fast, folks, as you'll see in the uh, this video and other videos. 
it's uh, really cranked up. Well, and remember, the last video we talked about you and Sanjay doing this kind of growing, who can grow it fast. Right, or, and or Sanjay's getting his box next week. Right. I'll be there to film it. Right. We'll add it in, and we'll get to see who can grow what and, and right. how fast. What's the difference? Fast yeah. color? So I, I have my acclimation tips. Okay, hold it. So that you got these from Top Shelf? From Top Shelf. This is the package. This is the box my friendly neighborhood UPS guy comes. I love UPS over FedEx. I'm yes. putting in a plug for them. Amen. And my UPS guy, I actually brought him in and showed him the tanks. So now when he possibly can, uh, I'm his first drop off. Uh, so I've made friends. Idea. So if you can make friends with a UPS guy, yeah, you get your idea. boxes quicker. Uh, but he understands why in the heat of the summer or in the winter, and he always rings the doorbell. So nothing sits on a porch right. for any length of time. Right, right. So here's their acclimation guide, okay. and then here's the guide of all the stuff that I got. Well, okay, so why top shelf number one? I mean, they, I, I, I buy from everyone, I'll right. be honest. Uh, for this yeah. tank, I've gotten corals from over 20 different vendors because everyone doesn't have everything. Right, right. A lot of places have other things. Uh, they have a lot of unique pieces that I look for, uh, like Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd <laughs> and Optimus Prime, right. some of the really uh, nicely colored corals. Because the other thing that I like about them is I've seen a lot of what their mother colonies look like. It's right. not just me guessing, this is a really beautiful frag and it grows into something you're going, right. I'm not that excited about it. Right, right. So that's one of the things. Two, they package everything really nicely. It's the heat of summer. Uh, it's 85 degrees out. It's packed in with all kind of goodies, cold packs. Obviously, I didn't open this before. <laughs> everything's named. Shows you what the flow should be. Shows you what the light should be. And everything's not high, high, and that's it. It, it, it does change. This is Spyro the Dragon. <laughs> he came in a box, in a bag, so that he's protected. Even if he's been flopping around, which right. UPS guy, God love them, they still throw right. the boxes. Okay, here's here's how they pack it. They, it's the name and what the treatment is. Here's how it's shipped in the box. But you know, God love the UPS driver. They flip stuff over. It turned right side up. So even if it's flipped over, it comes back the way it should be. So it's pretty impressive. I'll show you again. Flips over, and it goes the right way. Right. And you flip it back over, it goes the right way. <laughs> so it, it's really well packaged. I mean, that's one of the things I appreciate about them. Uh, I'm going to check the temperature now because it's the one thing I do check when I'm acclimating. Yeah, I was going to say, as far as acclimation goes? I don't do a really slow acclimation. Yeah, I do a, a... Perfect. My tank is uh, 79. This water 79, so it's perfect for me. So what I do is I fill up my little acclimation chamber with half of their water and half of my tank's water. So right out of the gate, you're half and a half. I'm half and half. I'd love to tell you that I keep the names and I remember what everything is, but until they grow out, I don't know what anything is. Yeah, sure. I mean, I have a pretty good idea of what's where. Like, there's certain corals in here that I'm going to put in certain good spots. Like, here's a golden jaw dropper. I know where that's going to go up past the uh, uh, Tangerine Dreams uh -huh. and a couple other ones that I've gotten from them. Yeah. And then I go through, cut it. Take it out. Oh, which coral is that one? This is the golden jaw dropper. Okay. I used to put numbers if they were white plugs right. and keep track of things. Right. But in a tank this size or in a frag tank with 200 frags in it, it's rough. It's rough. So <laughs> and everything changes colors. I'd love to tell you it looks exactly the same in my right. tank. It doesn't. Right. So. I wait till everything grows out. I mean, one of the things people say is, you have all these corals growing out as frags now in this tank, and you still have all these frags back right, here. Right. What are you going to do with these? Well, not all these are going to grow into the choice primo stuff that I wanted to. Right. Whatever doesn't grow into something really nice, I'm going to take out, and I'm going to put stuff from there back in. Right, so right. I have backups, and stuff gets killed. Uh, I just lost a coral yesterday 
from the stupid vermited worms, sat on his net, irritated the coral, overnight killed the coral. Is that the one that you just took out? That's the one I just took out. <laughs> so that's what I, I hate. Here's Sin City. So now what I'm going to do is I'm still going to save a little bit of the water. If I can find the razor blade again. Here we go. And then all the rest of the water is just going to go into the bucket. There we go. Because temperature-wise, we're good. Alkalinity, I know from their past corals that I have already in the tank, we're close. So that now everything's just going to go in here. And it's going to go a lot faster. But I am keeping, like I said, three of the big corals that I want are Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and this sounds silly, and Optimus <laughs> Prime. And those are going in the front and where their section is. Because right. one of the things I've done is I've tried to keep sections in the tank for different people's corals. Right. Uh, there's corals from Worldwide and Jason Fox and Vivid and Unique and right. uh, Pirates uh, Reef. Mm -hmm. Literally, I've gotten corals from 20 different people. This is the, the, one of the biggest batches I've gotten. This is sitting on the entire right side of the tank. Right. So I've made space or left space there. And I've also kept the lighting down at 75%. Because one of the things I found is if I had it all the way up, I was bleaching some of these new frags I was putting in right. really fast. Right. So now I'm starting it off low. And then once everything's in, and after this batch, pretty much everything is in, I'm going to start gradually increasing it by 2% per week yep. so that after the next month or so, or actually the next three months, I'm going to be at 100% right. for four hours a day. Right now I'm at 71 or 75% when I'm there. And is it 75% of all the spectrums? Uh, it's 75% okay. as the maximum light. Okay. And as far as like white versus blue versus red and all that other kind of... Kind of everything. Color. When it runs at 100%, it's going to run at a full 100% on everything. Okay. Yeah. And now, with uh, with these corals from TSA, um, it, you said this is kind of your last batch, oh, so to speak. I, I just, I'm, I pretty much, as we'll look at the pack, <laughs> you'll see it's pretty much run out of space. Hold it. New 500 a year ago. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's had corals being put in for six months, yeah. but I've been collecting frags for the past over a year and letting them grow out and now adding them. And so the whole tank is has specific designs right. and that's what we're gonna talk about yeah. later. Right, right. But right now the main thing we're talking about is getting your frags, acclimating them right. Uh, even though I know these frags, I've never had an issue with anything coming in, right. I still treat them. I still do a, a, a quote unquote dip. Right. Just because as good as everything is, all I need is one bug to sneak into here. Right, right. And I have issues. And I've already battled just about everything you can battle in this tank, and I'm right. still battling a couple of things. Right. I don't want to battle anything else. Which is wild, right? Because I remember we did that video with Top Shelf way back, and you know, to your point, they were they were talking about how they know everything in their world has been clean, right? And to your point, you're like, yeah, that's that's the case. However, doesn't hurt to be too cautious. Yeah, right? I mean, uh, the vermited worms came in on something. I didn't. They weren't right. in the 500, but now or in the 300 for the most right. part. Right. Now that I've gone to this 500, they've exploded. Right. Because one, I'm feeding this tank a lot more often, so there's a lot more food. And I was feeding the corals. Feeding the corals is great. They grow faster, but right. the vermited worms reproduce even faster. Yeah, sure. So I've cut back on that. Sure. And are you still feeding the HPD? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a feed when we, we show the video that time. Well, hold on, now what kind of coral is this one? This is Rainbow Loom. This is a uh, greenish coral with purple tips. Theirs is really a, a nice coloration of it. It'll be interesting to see how it compares with another Rainbow Loom I have in the tank. Because one of the things that's going to be interesting is right. some of these I have duplicates of, right. and Sanjay's going to have duplicates of, and to see how different right. they are from different vendors and in Sanjay's tank and my tank because as we've joked over the years right. I've given him probably 30 corals he's probably given me 30 corals they never look alike in our right. same two tanks right. even though the parameters are fairly similar or actually pretty right. close right. and the lights are the same yeah the lights are the same the current is strong in both we both have heavy fish loads we both keep the nutrients up right it doesn't make any difference right right exactly
Here's the one that's named after me, Paletta Pink Tip. And I, I, as I've said, I did not name this coral. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, in, in general, when did that name come about? Actually, I, I think I told this story before. It's rather curious. I was writing for C Scope and AFM at the time. Hold on, hold on. What the hell is C Scope and AFM? C Scope was Aquarium Systems' little quarterly publication that used to come out. Okay. And they were cutting edge and came out with all new stuff all the time. Okay. And AFM was Aquarium Fish Magazine. Okay. Both uh, C Scope is now online, AFM is now gone. Uh, I was writing for them. And I wrote an article on propagating corals. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call from a guy, and he said, uh, I'd like you to write an article on propagating corals for me. I said, okay. I said, I'm just basically going to add on to the one I was doing. He said, that's perfect. He said, I'll pay you in corals. Being sure. the coral addict that I am, <laughs> right. I wrote the article. I sent it to him. Three weeks later, there's a box on my... And no, no, doesn't right. tell you, hey, there's a box of corals coming. All of a sudden, there was a styrofoam box with four <laughs> corals in the tank. Right. One was green, three were brown. Okay, this is 1994, 95, okay. somewhere in that range. Any corals, the SPS corals right. you got were prime. Right. Take the corals, put them in. I was started, I had just torn down my soft coral tank and added mm -hmm. and put in SPS corals. Mm -hmm. Put these corals in. This green coral went at the top. It was really nice and green. About three months later, it suddenly started developing a bright pink tip. Right. Like a, when it's happy, it's the, right. one of the more vivid greens and pinks in your tank. Right. I started spreading it around and trading it with people. And because that was when lineage was just starting, right, right. it became known as the Paletta Pink Tip. I did not name it, but other people, because they got it from me, called it, hey, where, what's that where coral? It's the Paletta Pink Tip. It? Okay, what kind is this one? This is a this is called a mystery acro. <laughs> mystery acro. It's uh, green with uh, purple core, purple and blue core lights. Uh, got it. See, what else I like is their frags are a nice size. They're three quarter to an inch. Yeah, look at that. I mean, I've gotten some frags from people that were a quarter inch, uh, which is fine because some of these have gotten ridiculously priced. Right. The problem is, is when you get a coral that's a, a quarter inch in size, its mortality rate is about 75 percent. Really? Once you get it, yeah, I've done this, this study and so has a guy named Dieter Brockman in Germany mm -hmm. where we looked at the size of frags and how well they did. Mm -hmm. Quarter inch have about a 75 percent mortality. Mm -hmm. Half an inch have about a 50 percent. Three quarter and up, you're getting down to 20, 10 percent mortality rates. Mm -hmm. The mortality rates drop dramatically. It's just there's too many things that can happen to a small coral that kill it off. Okay. So here's one of my favorites, Bill Murray. Ah, oh, Bill. Let's, let's take a close-up look at Bill. He's not going to look all that crazy in the white light of, of <laughs> fluorescence. Right. But when we put him in the tank, it, it, we'll show him off. But he, see, he's going up in the corner here. This is where I'm putting <laughs> the, the, the Saturday Night Live the, character. The, the Saturday Night Live is an Optimus Prime. It's not really a Saturday Night Live character. <laughs> Here's another interesting one, Fruity Pebbles. This is a really nice coral as well. Yeah, it's one of my favorites actually. Especially when it's all fuzzy here. Yeah. And here's Dan Aykroyd. What are the odds oh, of that? Roy's looking like, and it's so yeah, funny. Yeah, Dan's about the same size as Bill, which is uh -huh. interesting. Perfect. Again, it's so cool just because everything looks brown outside. Yeah. Right? And there's another of my favorites, Princess Peach. Where did that come from? I, I mean, there's got to be a character, Princess Peach. Oh, Prin Car Princess Peach is, in, I think, uh, one of the uh, Nintendo characters. There we go, yes. So what's that one? This is Fantasy Land. Fantasy. So what's interesting is I'm sitting here. 
because I don't sit on the floor very often, the fish have gotten so useless and they were not feeding them. See, now here's a Monty. Now, this is what I always worry about with Montys, is those are the ones, as nice as these are, yeah. all you need is one nudibranch. And all that's right. why I use uh, this Underwater Creations Coral Cleanse, because yep. I found, one, it's clear, which I really like, and two, it's the only stuff I've found that kills off uh, Monty nudibranchs. It doesn't kill their eggs, so if you have right. eggs, you're right. screwed. Right. But my Monty's all go in there. All those Monty's that have been in there, and there's over 70, have been taken out and dipped. Right. I mean, I had them on a tray where I would take them out and dip them every three days for three months. <laughs> until I finally got rid of the Monty's. Right. This is Twisted Sister. Yeah. Yeah, we actually did a video about how TSA goes through and tries to kill the eggs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So they scrape as well, right? Yeah. Well, I also have the Melanaris Rass in there. Yeah. Springer Eye uh, Damsels that also pick things. Six lined Rasses and uh, Possum Rasses. All those things pick sure. different things. So since I've had air, all these natural predators in there for these things, right. and dipping and treating, knock on wood, <laughs> I, I haven't had. I've had other issues, <laughs> things that things don't eat, yeah. which we'll we'll talk about. What was this one? This is Tesla. It's a nice size oh, fry. Yes. How many friends did you get? You got a lot. Ten. Uh, we're going to be at about 20, I think, when we're done. <laughs> and like I said, I'm getting down to the how, finish how you, line. How do you know you're an addict? <laughs> yeah, how do you know you're an addict when you get more than five? <laughs> right. So, okay, so while we're unboxing, right? Right, these are three Montes. Uh, this is the Aquaman Monty. This one is... It should be kind of orangish with bluish polyps, which looks brown here. But, but when we put it in there, when we put it in the frag tank, it'll yeah. it'll shine. Here's the Optimus Prime. This is the other one I was waiting for to put in the front prime areas. When I say front uh, prime areas, I put the corals that I really want to see that I I know are are kind of spectacular. Obviously, you put those toward the front of the tank yep. for two reasons. One, when they grow out, I know they'll be really nice. But two, if they fall, I and know they yeah, fall, and, and I can get them before they've you know been in the mulm for uh, sure. a day and a half and died. Sure. So I mean that's the that's the problem with a 500 gallon tank when stuff falls. The nice thing is since I have this Panta Ray pump in the middle, it blows out the whole middle of the tank. Everything goes to that end. So it'll pop over there. It'll pop over there. Like I just found a, a tenuous frag that had fallen. Uh -huh. uh, something I, I mean, it was a, a common tenuous. It wasn't, you know, something crazy like a home record, which I have right in the very, very front. Right. But it blew, and I knew, and I found it right away. I mean, right. it only been down for a day. Right. Uh, this is a leptoceris. This is actually going to go into the nano tank. It's green with like little dots on it that are the fireflies. Yeah. It's always sad. It's like getting the last French fry. <laughs> oh, we're at, that may be the last one. The last French fry? The last French fry. No more French fry. Oh, no more. Just styrofoam. <laughs> no, and I've learned to be very thorough going through these boxes because I've missed corals in the past, found them a day later. Sometimes not with really good results. Sometimes they've amazingly survived. Really? Yeah. yeah. So we're done there. So what do we get? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Twenty on the button. Yep. Okay, so, so, okay, so now you have half their water. Half their water. So a big mess of bags that's going into the garbage. And you knew that the water temperature was the same. I checked right? the water temperature. The alkalinity from past experience is pretty close. Yep. Although my alkalinity is a little bit higher today than it should be. Fill it up half and half, and then I take one capful. Look at the time. 
stir it around. Now, if everything's good, the other thing I like to use are these white cups. Because yeah. if anything comes off, they're pretty easy to see. Sure. I mean, they cost a dollar at the dollar store. I probably have like 10 of them because mm -hmm. I'm always moving stuff around. And if I'm taking stuff from down here to upstairs or moving things around, these are real easy to use. Sure. And I'm not spilling water on the floor, sure. which is something I did a lot of in the past, yeah, 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 right. which is not a good thing. Well, and again, to your point, they're white, so you can see anything that drops. Yeah. And uh, it's been amazing how much stuff I found on corals that looked absolutely immaculate when they came in. After running this and spraying it, uh, toss me the base of the stuff there. Not the white one, the black one. Because the other thing that you're supposed to do is baste everything off over the five minutes I keep them in here. Because what happens is over time, things get weaker mm -hmm. and they fall off the coral. So if you blast them, they go off. So now, you first mixed it with your fingers. Aren't you like worried about any kind of weird kind of chemical reaction? If, if I would have died, I would have, it would have killed me by now. After 35 years of sucking on dirty uh, <laughs> yeah, siphon awesome. tubes and getting electrocuted <laughs> and everything else, I figure I'm uh, pretty safe at this point in my life. <laughs> Maybe that's why your hair fell out. You never know. I, I know why my fair hair fell out, but we're not going to name her name. <laughs> we're not going there. No. Now, how long do you let this stuff soak? Five minutes. Okay, so it's a five-minute thing? It's a five-minute dip. And then I will take them out and put them back in the tank water. I'll just lift out the tray and put them in here. Got it. I used to use Bayer, and right. Bayer killed a lot of stuff, but it didn't kill the, the nudibranchs. Okay. And you can't see what came off. Okay. I would pour it down to nothing to where there's just a little residual in the bottom, add water to it to try to find stuff. But even sure. then, it was, I like this clear stuff. Sure, sure. I mean, it, it's a, a little more expensive than Bayer, but, yeah, but it's when what you're paying for what you're paying for frags. I was gonna say, how much did you just spend in twenty corals? Yeah, it's, it's right. better to see what's going on, right. and to have an idea, because I don't think I'll find anything because I've not found anything from any other stuff in the right. past, right. and I, I find stuff very rarely, but every now and then I trade or get frags from yeah, other hobbyists, right, right, right. and I found significant things on some yeah, of those, yeah, yeah. even yeah. though quote unquote their tanks were clean. Right. Right. I was going to say, ask Sanjay, right? Yeah. Sanjay still has uh, flatworm eating nudibranchs. Right. I gave him the Montes. I will admit to that. But I have, like I said, I've spent three months right. cleaning them, eradicating them. And I mean, you you, can, you have video of the yes. Montes now. There's not a mark on yes. any of them. And there's over 70 named Montes there. Right. So right. pretty much every Monty there is is there. If you had to guess, right? How many frags you have touched with your fingers and added to your fish tanks over, let's just pick, pick the last decade. Over the last decade? Last decade. Give me a rough number. Well over a thousand. Okay, right. So again. No, but the, the, remember the 1200 though, well that was, no, that was 15 years ago now. Right. The 1200 was started all primarily from frags. Was it really? Yeah. That was an insane tank. Wow. I never realized that like those huge colonies. Those were all from frags. From frags. The, uh, the, the big colony of the, of the Paletta pink tip, uh -huh. nothing I ever put in that tank was bigger than my fist. Everything was right, right. relatively small because I wanted to add as many as I could. Sure. That's why I did the 1200. And that was all moved from the 550. And the 550, those were big colonies, right, but right. those were all from frags. Right. Those were all from frags from the 90s. So, <laughs> so I guess where I was going with the, you know, at 1,200, again, a lot of people like want to overcomplicate acclimation, right? It's, I've not, I've done it really complicated, slow drip and everything else, and I've done it where I had to run for work and I just did it bing, bang, boom. Right. I found no difference in the mortality. As long as your temperatures isn't significantly different, 
And your alkalinity should be close. I mean, I know their alkalinity usually runs eight and a half to nine. Mm -hmm. Mine right now is between nine and a half and ten. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit higher than I would like it to be, but it's not 15 or something like that. Right. And everything else is relatively, the calcium's 400, magnesium's 1350 to 1400. Everything else is relatively close. We got what, another 30 seconds. What about pH? pH is something I've been playing with. In right. this tank, it runs 7.8 to 8. I'd like to get it 8.2, 8.3. The problem is this is a closed right. room and the CO2, but in the wintertime, I'm going to open up that window. Right. In the summertime, right. you just can't, can't let in the heat, but I can let in the cold. Sure, sure, sure. Huh. Yeah. So it, it, there we are. For acclimating purposes, you don't have to get too excited as far as the pH goes. No, I don't. I don't monkey around with it a whole lot. Got it. Let's see what we got. See anything? I see some copepods. I see a couple little worms. I don't see anything that I would be worried about. No nudibranchs. No flatworms. I mean, those are the main things I'm looking for. Right. There we go. So let's dump this. Okay. So here's what I use. I use Tunze's coral gum. Okay. And Polyp Labs glue. Okay. Just because I found this is, they're both stickier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm looking for is stickiest stuff I can find. Mm -hmm. And my cutters are here. So first what I do with my razor blade, I scrape off some of that. And what I also like about this is it's two different colors. You got a white one and you got a purple one. Now you're thinking, why is that a big difference? Well, a lot of these are the same color and you're never sure if you're mixing up different yeah, yeah, stuff. Right, right? Yeah, it's two part. It's yeah. good to make sure you have two parts in. So we mixed up some of the purple. Then we put this away. Key is to keep these separate from each other. <laughs> so then what I do, I take a small little piece of the white, and I say little. Small little piece of the purple. Okay, hold it up to the camera so I can see this. Here's how big these are. When you mix them, it should be about the size of a pea. There you go. Then take the glue, take the top off. Mm -hmm. No, that's what you got to do in order for this to pop because it's sealed. Uh huh. Then I'm ready. Take the top off. But before I get going, first thing I got to do is. Take this out. This is the Optimus Prime. Cut the bottom off. And I, I love that they have a, a frag plug that one, isn't that thick, and two, that you can cut. Why that's important? Your goal with a frag plug is to have the corals grow over the frag, grow onto the coral. If they have a big, flat, big fat frag plug, it takes them that much longer, and a lot of times the coral glue doesn't last. Got it. So then what I do is dry off the bottom, Take my two pieces of epoxy, knead them until they're mixed, add a little dab of glue, put the epoxy down over the glue. Add another little dab of glue. It's a lot less than I used to do. Mm -hmm. I'll switch your places. And then I have the spot I wanted right here. It's been sitting there. And it goes right into place. So now I know that was there. The nice thing I like about using this epoxy too is if one of these pops off, you'll know that it popped off. Over a couple weeks, there'll either be algae around it or the plug itself will stay there and the, the top plug will fall off you know when something has fallen off oh okay so that way i can i can keep track of things like i said these are all top shelf frags i've gotten in the past that are growing out obviously i've left room for more to be put in all the way up the sides and back so i have lots of room to put all their stuff in and that's what that's what the game plan is cool 
And now what I'll do is when I'm mounting a lot of frags, is I'll take off. And what else I like about this, this epoxy is it's relatively soft and it's pliable. Yeah. So it's easy to work with. So I mixed up, I have five here. Ah, uh, so you're just gonna bang them out. Yeah. I'm gonna get five of these ready. Because if you can do it this way, you run less of a risk of getting wet. But if you do much more than five, your one hand tends to get wet over time, and then you have problems. So it's like uh, dipping fried chicken. You have a wet hand and a dry hand. The same thing here. My left hand will be my dry hand for mixing epoxy. My right hand will be my wet hand for putting the corals in and the glue. One thing to watch is don't get your fingers caught in between this, because I've done that, and you will see all kind of things you don't really want to see. <laughs> so five at a time. Five at a time. I'm looking for where I have the spaces. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. So I know where the spaces are. And I'm doing also doing this many because I don't have to use the ladder, so we don't have to be jumping up yeah, and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this hand got wet, so. Grab the dry towel, because if it is damp, it's just not as sticky and it doesn't adhere to the surface as much. The other thing I might suggest, if you have your power heads blowing there, turn them off while you're doing this. Give the corals a chance to stick. Uh, I've learned this the hard way <laughs> when I've placed them in some places. Take the glue. Well, I guess to that point, how long? How long for what? For it to cure, set up. Uh, this will glue. This will set up in about five minutes max. Okay. It sets up really quickly. So I put my little bead of glue, my little pancake of epoxy, my other little bead of glue. Like I said, you're not using much. You just want it to basically act to hold everything down. And then you just twist it into place and you're good to go. I'm gonna take the next one. Pancake. And I'd love to tell you that I came up with this formulation, but this is worldwide gluing method. I'd also love to tell you that it worked all the time and nothing ever falls off, but that would be a lie. So what's the uh, accuracy rate? <laughs> Depends how fast your corals are growing. Oh, if, yeah? if you get frags that have already encrusted, uh -huh. odds are it's going to grow fast enough that it's going to adhere or be grown down in the rock before the uh, corals are, uh, before the glue breaks. But if you get a little tiny frag, once again, it gets to if you have a little tiny frag that hasn't been allowed to do anything, right? And you put it in, right? It's it's not going to adhere, and you're going to have problems. Well, it may, well, not always, but it may sure, sure. cause some problems. Remember what this one is? Yeah, this is uh, Dan Aykroyd. Oh, Dan, boy. So I have Optimus Prime, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd. Do that one more time. Optimus Prime, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd. See, I, I will admit, I'm not like some hobbyists that I've met that know what every single coral is in their tank and the name of it and you know I don't do that. One I have too many 
And two, as you get old, your memory isn't quite where it used to be. And three, things morph into different things. While it may look like uh, Dan Aykroyd today, it may be Chevy Chase tomorrow. So, that is my world. Yeah, there's just too many other th good things I want to remember rather than the name of every coral I've ever gotten. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give these all these corals at least two to four inches around themselves to grow in. Yep. And so by the time they grow into that two to four inch gap, uh -huh. I'll have a pretty good idea of what they're going to look like. Because as I said, corals morph. Some of these corals are spectacular in one tank, and in this tank they may be eh, and right. some of those ant eh corals may be spectacular in this tank. So until they grow out and turn into something, Well, that's what will be interesting with the whole Sanjay getting the exact same corals. Yeah, to see how much they morph. Right, from the exact same colonies, from all that exact same stuff. Well, and the thing will be is they'll look different because he runs his lighting right. schedules different colors. But when we photograph them, we'll have to photograph them under the same lights right. to right. see you know how much they've changed or how much they are like. Right. Obviously, some of these are too close, but like I said, by the time they get to that two to four inch range in size, I can take them out and move things around. Sure. Because fortunately, I know there will always be someone who wants the corals I've grown out. Yeah, 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 right. Okay, so we'll do the rest of these later, but this gives you an idea because this is going to be the, the total top shelf yep. section of the tank so you get a pretty good idea of how they look and everything I've gotten from them over the last four months has done well so now it's time to get the big one after the sale to really see how they do over time because I still have room for another 15 corals over here believe it or not <laughs> okay so okay so to that point then let's kind of put a wrapper on this a little bit um, number one as far as top shelf goes right they are one of about what five ish or six ish that you kind of are loading this tank up with they're they're one of 20 but they're okay. one of the six that i've gotten the most corals from okay or one of the five probably four that i've gotten the most corals from okay yeah easily the four okay so all of them are, are named all of them have great corals mm -hmm. they do a very good job in, in shipping and making sure first everything's clean it doesn't matter how nice the corals are. If they come in with a lot of crap on them, right. you're going to have problems. Right. Two, they're generally nice-sized frags. They've been acclimated. They've been in their tanks for a while. Uh, they keep their color for the most part. I don't, I don't have their stuff morph as much as I've had other people's stuff morph. Right. Uh, they give you the conditions that, under which they'll thrive, so it's up to you to do that. Now, what is high? I mean, at some point, somebody can say, okay, is high 250 pars, at 500 right. pars, right. at 1,000 par. It varies. Like I said, I'm running this tank at 70, 75 percent right. max intensity. Over the next three months, I'm going to boost it up to 100 percent intensity. One, I, I think I'll get even better growth because that's what I'm looking for because I'm mostly frags. Right. But I'll also see what the coloration does. And it'll also be more comparable to what Sanjay does. He runs, <laughs> ramps up 100 percent, eight hours, ramps down. Yeah, very this is going to be running, ramps up to 100 percent. 100% for four hours, ramps down in blue for the next eight hours. Right, right. I think that'll be interesting to see. Right. Parameter-wise, I run high nutrients. He runs high nutrients because you run a lot of fish. So that's not going to be much change. Temperature-wise, you run the same. Flow-rise, I'm running roughly 70 times the tank's volume per hour. He's running right. 60. Right. So we have a lot of flow in our tank. So that's not going to be much different. Uh, other than that, everything's pretty much the same. Right. So it's going to be interesting to see over the next three months, six months, a year. Actually, one how much right. all this stuff grows in, right. but two how much it differs from tank to tank. Right, right. And it'll go multiple years, which is even going to be cooler. I yeah. Think, right. Yeah, because this tank is much more stable and, from my point of view, better design. Sure. Which we'll talk about in the next video when I go over all the different things on this tank. And okay, so again, for that new hobbyist on acclimating, 
So you already talked to them how, again, it's important to get your corals from a place that you can trust. Basically. Right. Right. Check the temperature before you acclimate. If the temperature was different, I would have floated them and then d did what I did. Okay. So because they were both 79 degrees, there was no need Boom. to. It's right. the middle of summer here, so it's warmer. Right. Uh, right. Well, and on that point, it's middle of summer. Get to know your UPS guy. Yeah, right. get to because if they sit on the, your front porch for four hours, you're going to have nice coral soup. It's, <laughs> Not worth anything. Because right. they can talk, actually, corals can take cold. Uh, in my old house, I screwed up and had the windows open up, mm -hmm. and the tank water got to 68 degrees, right. which I thought was going to be lethal to all the SPS corals. They mm -hmm. all made it. The only thing that died was a bright fluorescent green cingularia. Right. right. So they can tolerate lower temperatures. By the same token, I've had tanks go up to 84 and 85 and lost half to three quarters of them. Right. So cooler is better than warmer. Right, right. And back on to the acclimating. Um, when you acclimated, those little white cups that, again, so you could see it. Yeah, you could see how everything came in. You could see there was no brown water in there, which also yep. tells you that the corals did well. The water was clear. The water was, you know, everything, even if you bounce them around, turn them upside down, they still turned the same right. way. They, that's a really nice packaging design. Right, right. So there's enough room in there for them to flip so you don't have corals sitting out in the air, which I've also had happen. Sure, sure, and sure, sure. as I said, the main key is use UPS, don't use FedEx, because I've gotten over a hundred boxes over the years from FedEx. They would lose one in three, and I'm yeah. not exaggerating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do not use them for anything, because all they'll do is say they're sorry, they don't care. Right, right, it's UPS. Yep. It's UPS. They call me if they're late. I've actually met their truck right. and picked up stuff. Right. So. As I said at the beginning, make friends with the UPS guy. <laughs> make friends with the FedEx guy, too, but make really good friends with the UPS right. guy. And then as far as the dip goes, what kind of dip was it again? Uh, underwater Creations yep. Coral Cleanse. And you did it for five minutes. Five minutes. You can run it. I've run it up to 15 minutes when I've forgotten without any problem. Is <laughs> that age again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But 15 minutes is, is five minutes in, in basting it. You're going to knock everything off that's going to be off. And several other people have run that. And I've also seen that it has killed off the money eating nudibranchs. Jason Fox, I turned him on to this. He found that ate the mon it knocked off the money eating nudibranchs, which when you're getting Montes, that's the biggest right. thing you have to worry about. And I always, if I've had flatworms, I've seen it knock the flatworms off as well. Right. Uh, fortunately, none of the big vendors have flatworms that I've sure. seen. Sure. But if you're trading or going to a frag swap, particularly a frag swap, sure. uh, I've gotten more bad things out of frag swaps. Everything gets dipped. Particularly when you once you have a tank and it's relatively well established, everything gets dipped. Yep, makes sense. So probably don't get 20 frags at a time unless you have a really big tank that you're trying to fill. Five is usually a good number. Right. But if you want to go nuts like I do, do it this way. I was going to say don't talk, tell, don't tell Top Shelf. Top Shelf. No, 20 is a good number. 20 is, 20 is a good number, particularly when they're having a sale. Right. But right. if you have a 120 or a 90 or something, right. five to start with. You, I, as, I, as I have learned, unfortunately, the hard way, I can't have every coral I want. I have most no, of the corals I want. you got most of them. you got 95. I, I only have, I have a list right now of six, maybe uh, seven corals right. I still want. Okay, hold on. Of that list of six or seven, what's your top? What's the one one you want? That would be a jaw dropper, but those, I'm not spending $600 for a little okay. tiny nub. Sure. I know over the next two or three years, they'll come down in price. Right. So until that comes down, I can bide my time. There you I go. have enough interesting stuff in here <laughs> okay so and back on to the when you actually put them, the frag plug in you said the, the Tunzi and then the polyp labs glues. yeah the Tunzi uh, epoxy two-part white and purple yep. and the polyp lab glue works really well it works better than the, the cheaper stuff it's stickier it tends to adhere longer I've, I've run experiments doing all kinds of different glues right. uh, vertex makes a decent one Julian makes a decent glue. They're all kind of acrylic. I like the one that's in the little tube right. because when they're in big bottles, I tend to use a third of it and then it dries and then it's useless. Sure, sure. I mean, you're supposed to store it in the refrigerator and then it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, I got enough bothering my <laughs> wife in the refrigerator. I don't really need a bottle of glue. So I just like the small tubes. They work real well and I don't waste a lot of glue that right. way. Right, right. And to your point, like an Oreo cookie almost, right? In other yeah. words, glue. And then gum, and then glue. Yeah, and not a ton of any of them. What you want to do is have the epoxy, the glue hold the epoxy, and the glue hold the plug to the epoxy until the epoxy holds on to the mm -hmm. 
uh, live rock, and then the overall goal is to have the coral then uncrust and grow over, and then you don't have to worry sure, about it anymore. Sure. And then five minutes with the flow being low or off. Right. And then you're back. Then you're because the the tons it will be a totally solid. Right, right. When I first started using the tons, I was grabbing big globs of right, it. Right, right, right. It would it would seal up like a rock in five minutes. So I know how how good it works. Right, right. So a little bit goes a long way. Right? Yeah, you don't okay. need a lot. I mean, I've glued most of those with uh, two bottles of that. Sure, sure. Okay, and so we are at day one of kind of the San J. Mike top shelf. Battle of the network yeah, stars. That's yeah, that's right, exactly. Yeah. The network corals. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see. I mean, everything will be over here, so there'll be an easy comparison. Right. Uh, we're going to go to Sanjay's and film him opening the box, mounting them. We'll have an idea where they are. Hopefully he's cleared out space like I did so you can yeah, see one. Yeah, because he was packed. Last time that was no, so he cleared out a lot of space, so yeah, <laughs> not by design, not by design. <laughs> okay, so well, good deal. Thanks, Michael, for Th sharing. Thank you, guys. See you soon.